Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll move on next to of the press where we reviewed the front pages of major dailies across the nation. And uh, we have a Tunde Kolawale legal practitioner who will be joining us to discuss um, all of um, the, you know, the headlines this morning. Good morning to you, Barrister Tunde Kolawale. Good morning to you, too. And good morning to all the people who to us. Yeah, good morning. Uh, we'll start um, off now with um, the Daily Independent um, newspaper. The banner headline for this morning from the Daily Independent is uh, National Assembly OK's Administrative Financial Autonomy for Local Government, with some writers there, reject pension for presiding officers of legislature, the client's power to override president's veto, turns down proposal for special seats for women in legislature, a move to include VAT in exclusive uh, list fails. Uh, that's uh, the banner headline for the Daily Independent. Above the masthead, we have some other stories there. We won't shift March 26 convention date. That's according to the ABC governors. And just beside that story, ASU strike in Gige updates, Buhari says federal government has paid 92 billion naira so far. Other stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Ukraine conflict oil price hit seven year high of 107 US dollars. Buhari to visit London for checkup again. Now, court sacks to rabbi APC executives. And Buhari seeks amendment to recently assented electoral act. On the red sleep uh, below the paper, uh, politics should bring about developments, not violence. That's according to former president, uh, good luck, Jonathan. Those are all the stories you can find on the Daily Independent this Wednesday morning. Away from there to move on next to the punch newspaper. Uh, it leads uh, its uh, newspaper this morning with um, the federal government uh, loses out. National Assembly affirms state's part to collect VAT with two riders there. Lagos Aquaibum Hill lawmakers on value added tax says it's true federalism. Senators, reps retain VAT on concurrent lists. Local government autonomy skills through. Beside the masthead of the Punch newspaper, the NNPC to increase production as Brent, you know, crosses $105 per barrel. Then just below it, Electoral Act Amendment on appointees on constitutional. That's um, according to the President, Mohammed Buhari. On the blue strip above the masthead, Nigeria lost $50 billion investment while awaiting PIB passage. Other stories on the punch this morning. Russian invasion, Nigeria to evacuate Ghanaians, Cameroonians, others. APC governors meet Buhari say March 26 convention stays. ASUS demand mustn't violate wages commission procedure. That's according to the Minister of um, Employment, Chris Ngege. Other stories on the front page of the Poncha this morning. On the blue strip just uh, below the pictorial there, Mackinday tackles EFCC over alleged missing 9 billion naira local government fund. A separate politics from security, LCCI warns federal government. Delta vessel explosion, five bodies recovered. Rescue continues. Akiti Varsity student arrested for cultism. Hemp charms recovered. Now transport fares rise. Filling station sell petrol above 200 naira. Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the punch. I will move on quickly to the nation newspaper. A lead in the nation this morning, senators, reps, uh, no to bill seeking VAT for federal government. Almost all the papers have um, the constitution review as their major story for this morning. ASU has received 92 billion naira says federal government. Buhari Oyetola Tinubu Kalu eulogized at Deboye at 80. President goes on two-week medical vacation. Uh, VIN customs agents uh, meeting ends in deadlock. All right, more stories of the nation this morning. Buhari turns down governor's plea to drop 
at Damu. Those are the stories you can find on the Nation newspaper. And finally, uh, the last paper we will review for this morning is the Leadership newspaper. Also, it has constitution review as uh, its ban headline. President governors may go to jail for rejecting legislative summons. Several, several uh, riders there. National Assembly passes bill rejects special seats for women. A vote against moving VAT to exclusive list approves financial autonomy for state legislature, judiciary, and local governments. Reject pension for presiding officer of legislature, diaspora voting, mayoral status for Abuja, NLC mobilizes state for LG autonomy. Uh, let's just bring up Barista Kolawali as we look at some of um, the issues on the front pages uh, this morning. Thank you once again, Barista Kolawali. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, virtually all the papers this morning, uh, you know, had uh, the Constitution Review as uh, their banner headline. Uh, National Assembly OKs Administrative Financial Autonomies for Local Government. That is how the Daily Independent captioned it. Let us get your thoughts concerning all of that. Well, first and foremost, uh, let me say that uh, this is about the first time, I think, that we shall be doing a whole thing review of the Nigerian constitution, which we inherited from the in 1999. The current review has about 68 items on its uh, list. The fact that we have not to review the constitution of this since 1999 will seem to confirm what people like the Afghanistan, the human rights community, and some other progressive in the country are saying that the constitution was not made by the Nigerian people and for the Nigerian people. And because the constitution is a document that tells lies against itself when it says, we the people of Nigeria make this constitution and so on. Uh, if the constitution is imperfect, it probably will require to start listening to people who have been asking that we require to convoke uh, another concept and template to look at the constitution and uh, work out the constitution that is going to present the wish of reasons and then of all the material things rather than the cap trap that was already made uh, couple together and give it to us in 1999 for us to work and uh, work with this uh, work uh, take a cue of what is happening in the U.S. They are constituted as a constitutional basis or they are a And I'm not too sure that they have had up to get an amendment to that uh, constitution. Uh, even though that democracy is about 400 years uh, uh, old, the purpose of what I'm saying is uh, sometimes too, it is not how combustible or how voluminous or having all kinds of uh, human activity in the constitution that is the matter. No! The constitution is supposed to be a mere uh, guiding uh, organic law that will uh, be top of um, all other laws. The courts where there are lacuna in the constitution will fill in the gap. When there are lacuna in the constitution, customs more precedent and even peer review mechanism will come into fill the constitution. The rate at which we are going, at the end of the day, our constitution will become an encyclopedia that is so unwieldy, not just to carry around, but to also open it. Now to the first of the constitution. I will uh, agree with the assembly that the uh, user to reserve seats for women in the National Assembly and then the Federal Assembly uh, is a well thought out uh, decision. Uh, it is very difficult. And we shall be set in practice to start receiving uh, certain uh, seats. But I think you have to look at the police of the inside. If you research seats for women, mm. what about the fiscal and the who also uh, are disadvantaged? What about the uh, the military, 
de sécurité de tout terrain. Où il y a un boulot pour moi, un mot à dire que c'est un peu un de la chine à faire tout, un AVC là, en fait. What about the marketing? I know the other people from the economy. What we have, all the people who are the students of, all who are the students of the left are the professional politicians. And before they think about the fact that they just decide to, they will usually all the same thing that they do is the former day who take care of themselves. It is when there is a little length of when there is a surprise that they begin to consider the overall general interest of uh, the Nigerian society. So, these are lessons that uh, we need to look at. With regards to VAT, I think the national system has also done well. I'm not putting the case on the music In fact, I would have the fact mm. that the collection of that will remove totally from the hands of the federal government. The federal government already has a revenue base or sources where yeah, it can uh, earn revenue for the presidential market. The challenge or the problem uh, is that of corruption and inability to harness, inability to effectively connect or harness the sources of revenue so that the presidential market is uh, not solely dependent on the what comes from the presidential all right. Uh, all, the, all the time. All right. Uh, furthermore, I think the financial summary of the local government is also a welcome disease. Yes, I agree. And for the citizen, it's also a welcome disease. Even to. All right, but it's the most. Okay, okay, but Mr. Kola, well, I don't want us to dwell so much on the, the Constitution review because uh, we will uh, discuss that as a major topic uh, much later on the show. But let's look at um, other um, other you know stories that made them um, front page across um, you know the dailies. Uh, the president is also seeking amendment to the recently assented you know electoral act. Uh, one would have thought that it was Uhuru. So what's the situation as it is? Well, the way you need to start. I think they said that we are not acting law and that to the Muslim or to the clamor of the Nigerian people that they should attempt to uh, find out the uh, electoral bill into law. And that whatever mistake they have, they should uh, send it to the National Assembly so that the law can be amended accordingly. Furthermore, you are lying to that uh, the electoral act. As a postulate, or as a position to me, mm. which says that uh, whatever political party are going to be choosing a candidate in the election, will send the names of those candidates uh, to INEC, at least one million one hundred and eighty days before the election. Yeah. If the president can't find the electoral act, there are provisions of the, of the law, of the INEC law, of the electoral act will become a very difficult uh, to meet. And uh, furthermore, uh, law are not iron cut. Mm. Uh, as they are challenging their affairs, as they are a new development of science, the science in the economy and all that, you will require from time to time to revisit your law, to bring them up to date with uh, what is happening in the society. So, the President asking the National Assembly to a uh, kind of um, amend that electoral act. If as is the provision that says that political appointee uh, cannot participate in delegated uh, elections of the past and some other political activity, is uh, not in fact that with the provision of the Nigerian Constitution. It's also a foundation of the fundamental rights of the people. And uh, furthermore, the Constitution has taken adequate care of uh, whatever may be given the National Assembly when it says that the political appointees must resign their funding 30 days before they participate in any election or any, or any of the uh, conventions and delicate activities of their respective political parties. So, the National Assembly should have taken care of that. Because you cannot be bored, you want to talk about problems and then deny people their fundamental human rights to actively participate. Okay. Not just in what is happening to their party, but also in what is happening to their people. 
environment. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, the president's um, trip um, abroad uh, yet again. Uh, you know, tongues are really concerning that uh, the president um, has journeyed off to Nairobi, Kenya, for the UNEP 50th anniversary, and afterwards he will be going to the United Kingdom, London specifically, for a medical check. Uh, do you really think the president is in order? Should I mean, he's going away for about two weeks. Uh, should he have handed them over power to his vice? What are your thoughts exactly? That is the, the shame of the Nigerian nation. How many times have you heard that the American president is sick or has some less challenges and he will not fly for 10 weeks of business? How many times have you heard that the Japanese president or premier will go to London for treatment? But here, our political allies and our allies in general, they are very, very important. There are people who are totally back in the field. We have fired 20 years of this democracy. And the president, the president has been in church. The president, the president has been in government for 20 years now. We will take that modernization. He requires to do in the health sector to make sure that our health facilities are able to cater for the health needs of all the general people. He has also had the opportunity to do that. And it does not require to stop going to London or anywhere in the world to the treatment of the dead. Or any Nigerian like for that matter. But lo and behold, we have no trust in our head, we have no vision, we have no shape, and then the allies are very incorrigible. They spend so much energy and resources on political activities, forgetting the fundamental foundation or what is fundamental to the society which is the uh, ability to cater for the security of the people, ability to minister to the health of the people, ability to guarantee food security, and ability to, to provide housing, transportation for the people. Well, it is too late to start uh, discouraging or asking this Mr. President uh, not to go out there, to cater for them. He has only a few months uh, left. By 2013, obviously, our admonition to be to whoever may be winning the next election to so please fix our health facilities, fix the infrastructure, fix the school, fix uh, everything that we have to be fixed so that Nigerians can stand up anywhere in the world and say we are self sufficient in so many fundamental areas of our life. I have given this example before. The Saudi monarchy and um, most of the people they live with and the Arab world and the African countries used to come to Nigeria and there, especially in West and Africa, for their treatment. But because we refuse to modernize, we refuse to obey, we refuse to change the partner in those places to be a part with what is obtainable in the Western world, we do not have opportunity. And they now go up to Germany, they go to the US, they go to Japan. And not that for the people. For me, like I said, this is very, very stupid thing that should be happening. It shouldn't be coming from those whoever may be ruling and they will be ruling the election. And you will reconnect, as I said, that Nigeria should be very careful in voting into office. Pampers where the politicians come 2003. If you vote for Pampers where the politicians and big uh, people and candidates for the good value come to the next election, the situation will even be more than what you are doing under President Mohamed Bukhari because the head sector of other terrorists as he came into power without much being done in that area. You recollect the public said you cannot be issues and the uh, couple who are also not clinic to take care of uh, those people who require to take care of the health of that was really. So if I don't work in the house with the then you can imagine mm. what is going to be happening in the hospitals. All right. And some of these other things as well.
All right, let's move away from the president's um, uh, foreign trip. Uh, let's talk about other issues uh, that are uh, giving Nigerians some concern. Let's talk about our education sector. You know, ASO is still on it, uh, warning strike. And uh, yesterday, a video was trending. Uh, the Nant, uh, you know, association, they went to... They went on a courtesy visit to the education minister and they presented their case, although it was not really um, a palatable one. You know, there was a bit of, um, uh, I say, uh, some friction between the minister and the student. But then that's just um, by the side. ASU is um, in the news. Um, ASU has received um, 92 billion naira. That's according to the federal government. The federal government keeps on saying that uh, in these meetings, you know, some or most of the demands of um, these uh, uh, lecturers, and yet, uh, we still have all of these issues. What have we failed to see, really, by uh, Kolawole? Yes. This is a very, very fundamental question you are asking. And you will permit me to explain what okay. I've always been uh, talking about. That if a society is going to develop, if African nations, especially Nigeria, which also be the side of the black race, is going to catch up with all those developments uh, of the world, very fundamental issues required to be addressed. Mm. One is um, total modernization or overhaul or massive investment in education, All right. especially for mm. Who can check all the parts of the world that have developed? Whether this is China, whether this is Japan, whether this is US, and what are they? Three, two things are the bottom of their development. For a country like the US, they have very, very good things where all sorts of researches have been conducted and the outcome of the researches have been commercialized. They don't joke that. In the US, too, you have the electorate who are particular. If you do what the consultants expect you to do, if you do what the law grants are and not, they have no respect. I mean, the law who don't have respect for you. Just like the common man. The position is the higher and the flag and subjected to the same law. And that is a kind of restraint on whoever they want to cut corners and engage in action. The second one is the particular leadership. Mm. If you don't have a leader who has who could protect this country will require to have this number of people in this different location with this kind of equipment to be able to cater to the health of the people, then such a leader will not be the decision to put a city in some sort of ground that will meet the average of the city. If you have leaders who even go to school or who have no value to teach, whatever else they say will be Greek. So they, they don't understand because they are not a product of public education. Even though they are telling their own children abroad to go and read or learn or acquire knowledge in most of the most advanced or most of the airline schools that we could have uh, across. The third one is the uh, uh, vigilance, I mean, vigilance followership. The Nigerian people are the two tolerance of their leaders, they tend to put people together. In some other countries of the world, when they are very dependent here to stay, we bring a brought to for, for treatment. There will be no one. People will go to the airport and they will say that cross the attack and refuse to allow the perspective of the person to fly and not for check. When are you seeing people engage in that kind of fatalistic action? Look at the little that the most clear will be to do when the president last visited the uh, uh, briefing for this one. He came all the way from the US to mobilize the Nigerian community in the to go and around the president when he went to London for this one. And the president has to foster that uh, kind of that political thing. For me, it was on all the papers of law and also carried by the local Those are the kind of things. Those are the all kind right. of things that we check the emphasis of our leader. Those so, are the kind of affirmative things that we have to So, do how do we begin to, to fix uh, that these people don't continue their activities that they have been getting over this uh, uh, year? 
So my oh, question, my remember? question right now, be how do we begin to fix um, the rot in the education system? Each time yes. Masu goes on strike, uh, you know, the uh, academic calendar has been elongated. Students, uh, you know, are back at home, and at the end of the day, they seem not to have a sense of direction. This has become a perennial issue. Just what do we need to do? What have we failed to see? Really, okay, I, agree. I agree with you. Not too long ago, I wrote an article in the Nation newspaper on this incessant day outside. And my prognosis in that article was that uh, you cannot have quality education in Nigeria until the academic community begins to take it step with what is happening in the political terrain. Why do I say this? People who have no value for education. People who consider their interest politics. People who see the educational community as an editor are not likely to invest. Besides that, we are now to know which areas of life is it infrastructure, is it uh, uh, health, is it uh, uh, road transportation, is it a railway that is adequately paid for. So, invariably, no. invariably you're so asking. Um, for the academic community. So they should get into politics. That uh, special positions to be for them. Our education will be treated separately. It is when the people in the academic community begin to take interest in what is happening to the political career and they see that the right people talk. That is when we we'll begin to have them in the educational uh, sector. All right, thank so you. But, all right. Uh, all right, thank you, Barista Kolawale. Let's uh, leave um, an ASU uh, for now and uh, move on to other issues. That, that Let's stay with um, the Daily Independent. Uh, they captioned uh, the APC story this way. We won't shift March 26 convention date. That's according to the APC governors. We can find that just uh, above the masthead of the Daily Independent newspaper. You know, there has been several uh, talks uh, concerning the APC with its national convention, with the talk of um, zonal, you know, convention and, uh, um, and, um, and all of that. Uh, do you really think uh, that um, come um, the 26th of this month and that this particular you know, convention that you know, has been on for you know, a long time become very controversial will actually hold that day? Hmm. What is happening with is a very important It's a reflection of the way and manner that party was always coupled together with the purpose of capturing and political power. The APC is the house that is decided to change the power. And you and I do know that whatever houses are decided against the center and order will hardly be able to meet whatever goals that they have set them for themselves. So they are not meeting the goals within the confines of their position. And it has also become very, very difficult for them to be able to defend or keep to the Nigerian people the dividend of the property mm. that they promised them. Most of the issues that we raised only the campaign that they said they would do for the Nigerian people, they've not been able to do. Simply because there is no correction within that political party. It is an, an, an amalgam of uh, different things and different things alone who are trying to work together, which is practically the problem. Where they have no authority other than to ensure and that their convention will be uh, 26 of March. If the convention doesn't go, they will find it difficult to be able to comply with some of the provisions of the new care uh, uh, of the electoral uh, act. You also will not believe it, that the reason they are having all this challenges is because they don't want certain parties to contest certain things or to win certain things or to fly the flag of the party uh, in certain area. That is why they've been shooting the goal, they've been redrawing the map, they've been trying all manners of civic and order to shut out certain persons and all. And we think that is not the movement. No matter what the members, uh, uh, no matter what they do, no matter what they think about the members of the party, next day is the going of the of the members of that party. If you decide the face of that individual, those good for people, it is not for that to start giving and start uh, taking the good book and start rejoining the past. 
simply because you don't want that person to fly the flag of your, uh, of your party. It doesn't work that way. Because if you are not careful, the possibility is that uh, if they go to the next election, we just divided out as the two are now. The possibilities are very bad that they are going to be fired by the, uh, some of these other political parties who have had a very poor uh, uh, machinery with which to go into the 2017 uh, election. All right, uh, Barista Kolawali, it will be doing Nigerian some disservice if we don't talk about um, this issue that is still you know, lingering uh, even after four weeks. The queues are still there at most um, filling stations. And uh, let's uh, go to the punch. Uh, they caption them, um, they run this way. Uh, Transport fares rise, a filling station sell petrol above 200 naira. That's on the blue strip of the punch newspaper. Barista Kolawali, there seems to be no end in sight to this particular issue. It's been four weeks and Nigerians are still uh, groaning under the biting, you know, hardship, you know, occasioned by this um, scarcity of um, fuel. What are your thoughts, really? Well, uh, the average Nigerian person already know where the students are pinching them with regard to this petrol of oil static all over the place. It goes back to what we have seen. A nation that is uh, to, to plan. Our country is set to comprise about 200 million people. The 200 million people with millions of cars on the road, millions of generators in the different homes, millions of motorcycles, and other equipment and machinery that will use this as a dollar product. Yes, we don't have a single refinery that is operational. If you also look at it, there is not a single textile industry that is operational in this country. We always depend on the importation of all the items uh, for us to be able to do our two cannon. And when situations are like this, we are the vagary of what is happening outside the church. Currency frustration, war that is going on in, um, in uh, uh, it's, uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet uh, country, uh, Ukraine. Mm. What is going on in the Ukraine mm. and so many other opportunities? If we have fixed our final, and also insist that the people that we take the advice to, to build refinery are people who are really interested in building refinery and not people who want to take the paper and sell it at the, uh, uh, in the open market and make all meritors of profit. If only we would have had some refineries that are working. Until we fix the refinery, the possibility that we'll ever have efficient fuel supply in this country is uh, zero. Thank God, uh, thank God the refinery is suddenly coming on stream. But that will not be the solution to the Nigerian fuel problem. Because the man is investing as currency, and he might be selling the end product to us. Also, we are in, in that area, because he would have to repay back his too. And then you will also have to compete with other refineries that are operating in the other parts of the world. In terms of the local input that they put into those refining uh, uh, products. Furthermore, it is not just the way that we start, prices of transfer uh, of transport there have gone up. Uh, food uh, prices have also started back astronomically. And there are so many other things that we go into the market to buy like tomatoes, like onions, like bread, and what have you. Mm. Because they are also complaining about them. Yes. The diesel that they use to power their plant and water exactly is so. impacting negatively on the operational uh, uh, cost. costs. Yeah. We require to have an holistic approach to this binary, mm. especially the government that will come in in 2023. It is not negotiable. All the finalists in the year must work and we must build more. But we've been having the that con we have been having that conversation How for many years ago but we're having that conversation of the refineries working for a long time. It's as though there is uh, the body language doesn't suggest uh, that um, government you know is actually in the process or really plans to fix the refineries. We've been on about that particular you know conversation for so long right now, and nothing seems to be changing over time. Yeah. <laughs> 
This government has awarded a, a contract for the fixing of financing of two of the refineries and have even paid the refund. And you know the strategy of the road, the turnaround maintenance process will be completed until uh, uh, about six years to come. That is when this government will have set up. And that raises a very serious question. Why would the government be awarding a contract that is going to be completed in six years after they have left off? I sniff a rat in there. And like you said, what is so difficult to speak to the finance? I was speaking with a friend of mine, Engineer Onobo, mm. who has worked in some of these refineries, and who is also a popular minister. He's worked in the US and then South Africa and uh, South Arabia. And he told that it doesn't take more than six months, or sometimes even three months, to fit on around maintenance of, uh, the, of any refinery. And what is happening in Syria is a bit with the materials and the air, that they are not ready to fit any refinery. Most times is when they are looking for very big sums of money to run the next election or to do certain programs with the respective political parties that they begin to award the people contact for the turning around of the time. The money doesn't end up turning around the finance and the people who actually get the contact for the turning around of the finance are never engineers. Mm -hmm. They are political and they are what? friends of the politicians and what have you. All right. Who finance their people? All right, but it's a color on political parties that uh, on political parties in 2017. Mm. So we need leaders who have foresight. We need leaders who are committed to the overall interest of the Nigerian people. We need leaders who their Yes, of course, we need credible are leaders. Who will actually put the card before the horse? All right, uh, but it's a color on Mr. Kolali, for time's sake, I just want us to just uh, revisit um, the Constitution review, just one of um, the clauses uh, before we let you go concerning all of that. You know, the leadership newspaper, uh, I just am um, a bit impacted by um, this particular story. Uh, still on Constitution review, President governors may go to jail for rejecting legislative summons. Would it bring an end to the issue of uh, maybe impunity uh, when uh, most of these... Uh, you know, elected um, officials are uh, summoned by the National Assembly. Most of the times they fail to turn up. Would this actually bring um, the the change that we have been talking or looking for over time? Barrister Kola Thank you for doing our attention to this. Each time the National Assembly, each time the Federal Assembly has invited for example, uh, people in the sector of government, people in the security, to appear before it. They have only swapped the national assembly. And that that acting is very, very strange. Ultimate power lies with the national assembly, the Senate and the House of Representatives. If you if people the president will have any body, if there are people who can who can control the president, it is the people in the national assembly. Because ultimate power lies with them. They are the real representatives of the people. And so when the representatives of the people invite you, comments you, to come and clarify you, or to answer questions, or to even answer questions, the Secretary General of Police will stop them. The Director of DFS will stop them. The President will stop them. The Minister will stop them. And this doesn't happen in other countries. We have to respect the national. Because, like I said, ultimate power lies. They are the governor. But you see, the law that has been passed now, even though it's going to be constitutional, may not be uh, the final solution to it. Because most times, even in uh, the recent law that we have on that state, you cannot reject the government of the National Assembly. But these people still find a way around it. They will rush to court and uh, take a summon, asking the court to restrain the National Assembly from the uh, invite them. That it is going to be a piece of their fundamental human rights and war So, if this is made a provisional constitution in which anybody is common, uh, can be punished by the National Assembly, uh, it may not be a provision for the problem. These people will still be rushing to court to make sure that um, they frustrate whatever someone that the National Assembly may be 
issuing to them, or maybe they have to them uh, to come and, or whenever they have to come and discuss uh, uh, issues. And you see, it even starts with this um, the administration, or with the return to this uh, policy. You will recollect that uh, when uh, the political parties are just, they have issues uh, sometimes, and this was the second Republic of the Arab. And he was summoned by our court, one of our court. You know what he did? He hired a lawyer, I think Chivadeva Ramla, and Chivadeva Ramla went to court and argued that Ulusha uh, Sultan Sudan's constitution cannot be summoned uh, by anybody to come and appear mm -hmm. for this testimony in court. That is the consequence of what you are saying. The very Babangida was also, I think, has to appear before the Buddha panel. And he refused to go, and nothing happened to him. So, when you have made this kind of very bad decision, when you have this culture of impunity among the air life, you are thicker than the side and thicker than the left of us, then whatever laws are to make, on the visible people to have a change of heart, can see that, but uh, that's how the system will work, whether it be in the constitution, or in the electoral act, or in some other type of laws, uh, of the land. What we should do, an humble opinion, or when the what the matter is doing, when they summon anybody to appear before them, and those people receive, especially the security, especially the security, the TSS and, mm. and the ministers in the executive arm of the you can refuse to entertain whatever project to be uh, bringing uh, with respect to the ministry. What causes may be uh, You can also practice them, make them a personal in the All right. There's also the opportunity of a fair review mechanism uh, in which uh, you become, begin to uh, ostracize the third person with the third person when right. they invite you to any of the programs and uh, activities and all that. You mm -hmm. point up and ask them to pay the next assembly for so they can enjoy the party too. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kolaole. But it is good. It is um, they know in the right direction. But this is going to be important. All right, well right. said, by Mr. Kolaole. We just hope that um, all of them this will actually be implemented. Bring them before the next assembly. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kolaole. When they don't have that, don't have that before the next assembly. Barrister Tindekola Ole, I'm afraid that's as much as we can take. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, all right, thank you so much. Um, Barrister Tindekola Ole has indeed joined us, and we have been looking at um, all of um, the, uh, the stories on the front page of the nation's uh, newspapers and, of course, other ones as well. We'll take a quick weekend run. We'll just be showing you what happened this day in history. Stay with us.